All right. So there are a few different ways in which you can define a species. What was our biological species concept? Okay, yeah, so um, so a species is defined by its ability to interbreed in nature if they can interbreed. Populations can interbreed and produce viable offspring, then they are uh, the same species. If not, then they are different species. Okay? So there are then barriers that can prevent breeding that can either be pre zygotic or post zygotic. What's a zygote? Sperm or egg. Right, so the fertilized egg forms the zygote. Okay, so if it's a prezygotic barrier, then it prevents what? Fertilization. Fertilization. Good. And if it's a postzygotic barrier, that means fertilization occurs, but right. Yeah, so they are either unviable or infertile. Okay, so we'll go over each of the different prezygotic and postzygotic barriers. So, prezygotic. Um, Barrier is habitat isolation. So, um, species They're in different areas. They can even be in the same forest, but because they're in uh, maybe different levels uh, as far as like the trees or underground or around lakes in the water as opposed to drier areas, something about their ecology or how they uh, survive in their habitat isolates them from the other populations so they don't interbreed. So an example of this is squirrels. There are actually quite a few different squirrel species um, in this area. There's the big gray squirrels, the eastern gray squirrels you see all around. Okay, and where do you see them mostly? In the trash can, in the, trash can, <laughs> in the street. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they, they're generally though, you know, in fields or around trees, right? So that's kind of their habitat. Um, have you guys seen those big Woodchucks? Yeah. You have it? They're, they're all over. I saw one go under Main Hall. Okay? That's a squirrel. It's a big squirrel. They're in the same genus. But its habitat is underground. Right? What's that? Like huge prairie dogs. Yeah. Okay, so they're, um, they're isolated in their habitat. Now, I don't know if they would mate anyway, but... They're there. Um, there's also uh, red squirrels. Um, and you don't see those around um, this area because they prefer um, pine trees. Pine, yeah. So if you took um, two species or two types of animals that are like, that don't mate because of habitat isolation and you put them like in a lab, will they mate? Sometimes. I don't think these squirrels would, but, but yeah, cool. you can. So, and, and this is one of the problems with the biological species concept. Sometimes you can induce them to make hybrids, and sometimes they will naturally as well. <coughs> but um, at least these squirrels we have are isolated in the, the habitat use that they have. 
Okay. There are also flying squirrels around here. Has anyone seen them? I haven't, I haven't seen any. I've seen one. Have you seen the black squirrels? The big, uh, the big ones, or fox squirrels, what they're called? But I always see, yeah. see squirrels jumping from tree to tree crazy distances. Yeah, so yeah. flying squirrels then have also in, inhabit different parts of the canopy. So they're generally higher up in the trees. Okay, so anyway, there's an example of habitat isolation. All right, temporal isolation. What does temporal mean? Time, right? So uh, some species are defined by the different times in which they may mate or even be active. So what are different time periods that could isolate species? Seasons. Okay, yeah, seasons is a good one. Okay, so species of skunk mate at different times of the year, um, early in the spring or late in the spring. Yeah. Maybe different Time. Yep, exactly. So different uh, breeding season. That's it. What are other temporal separations you could have? Yeah. Maybe like time of day, like a nocturnal. Yeah, good. So uh, day or night. Um, years. Like the cicadas. Maybe, yeah, the cicadas, good idea, a good example. So cicadas go through reproductive events every seven years or 17 years, it depends on the species, um, where they all emerge at the same time, mate, lay their eggs, and then die. Right. And so that's a good example. Um, but yeah, so you may have nocturnal which, uh, animals, and actually flying squirrels are nocturnal. So even if they are inhabiting the same parts of the tree as the gray squirrel, they aren't awake at the same time. So they're, they're inhabiting different temporal um, time periods, right? Um, so there's nocturnal. Anyone know what active in the day, the term for that is? Diurnal. Diurnal, good. Does anyone know um, what the term is for active during dawn or dusk? Oh. So strange. Strange. Vampire, right? So day is diurnal, night is nocturnal, dawn or dusk is called crepuscular. Can't believe you guys didn't know that. Okay, so bats come out at dawn and dusk, they're active, um, but they're also active through the night. So they'd be crepuscular and nocturnal. All right, so again, those are different ways you could isolate temporally. Okay, behavioral isolation. So uh, there are some species which um, inhabit the same habitats, mate during the same time, but they have some sort of behavior that enables them to differentiate themselves, okay? So they have generally mating behaviors, that recognize the species. And the best example of that was the one given in the video lecture are these lace wings. These are little insects with these large wings. And the different species, they're active at the same time, but they sing different songs or make different sounds, which will attract their own species and not another species. Yes? Why do they do that? Is it actually biologically advantageous to continue to breed with the same people? Um, I mean, it would provide. Um, there's, I don't know. There's not a good. I don't think there's a good answer for that. But yeah, they've somehow separated. A, they're probably separated in their resource use as well. Okay. At least slightly. Yeah. Um, I, I don't understand how this would make someone. I mean, a different species, because like humans, for example, have different ways of getting people to sleep with them, but that the, they're still the same species, right? Right, so there's variation. So it would have to be distinct, right? So this species would have to make, um, people are not a good example. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, like the lace wing example, they would have to be distinct. Okay. Yeah. Can you explain the lace wing example one more time? Yeah, so there's lace wings, there's these insects. They look pretty similar from one species to the next. Um, they inhabit the same areas, but they, the species make different sounds to attract their mates. Um, and it's specific to their species, so. That was in the video lecture. Yeah, that was in the video lecture. Okay, and I have a video here of some funny behaviors, mating behaviors. This one was given as an example in the book, but actually is not an example of behavioral isolation. But there's a lot of other good stuff in this book, which we've got, I'm sorry, in this video, which we have gone over. So we're going to watch it anyway. I want you to pick out the biological um, concepts which we've gone over in this video. Okay, so this is a little bit of review. All right, so mechanical isolation. So this is just the mechanics of fertilization. are incompatible. Okay, so an example of this, um, I think this was given in the video lecture, are snails. If a snail has its whorl in one direction, it can't mate with a snail that has its whorl in the other direction. It's whorl. <laughs> It's shell, it's spiral, okay? And that's just because then their reproductive parts won't line up. Okay, so it has to mate with... If it was in the same direction, how do they mate? Like, I don't understand. Where, where are they? No, they have heads and stuff. It's just, I just drew the, sh the shell. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Those little real heads? Okay. Yeah. Why does it have eyes below its eyes? Yeah. <laughs> These are antennae. Oh, they're antennae. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's <I'm> good. <laughs> <scared. laughs> All right. Flowers. Wait. Yes? Oh, never mind. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So flowers um, produce different types of pollen. OK? And their pollen often has different shapes. So you may have a, a pollen that's Oops, that's really bad. Has lots of spikes on it. And then another pollen that's maybe smaller and has grooves in it. Okay, and the different shapes um, allow it to fertilize just their species. Um, because the, when an insect comes to pollinate, it may have all different types of pollen on it. But then there are certain characteristics which allow it to attach to the, the stigma and then go and pollinate the flower. So the shape and the characteristics of the pollen determine if it can fertilize or not. OK, and then gametic isolation. So this. Um, can occur when all other characteristics match up. So if they mate during the same time, um, they have the same shape, um, gametes, um, they are in the same habitat, and so on and so forth. If all of those match up, um, then they will need some other way to recognize uh, separate species. So um, sea urchins in uh, off the west coast of the United States, there are two species called the red sea urchin and guess what this one is called? The purple. Nice. Wow. The purple sea urchin. And they um, reproduce through a method called broadcast spawning. Okay, and so all that happens is a female lays a bunch of eggs out here in the middle of the ocean. The male squirts out a bunch of sperm in the ocean. 
and they find each other and, and fertilize. But the red sea urchin is doing the same thing. So it's making all these red eggs and red sperms. But there are, there's just some sort of chemical recognition for each individual sperm. So if a red sperm tries to go into a red egg, um, it will not allow for fertilization. Sorry, red into a purple and purple into red, it doesn't work. So only red can, can go into red and purple can go into purple. Right. Okay, so there's some sort of chemical recognition in the egg, which only allows the correct sperm from the same species to um, fertilize. Okay, but everything else is the same. They're out there in the same habitat, the same area. <laughs> And so gametic isolation is the only, only way to recognize sperm from the opposite species. All right, so post-zygotic um, isolation then, like we said before, occurs after fertilization. So in these species, they can form hybrids, okay? Hybrids, of course, are... Um, where you have a male of one species and a female of another, or vice versa. Okay, so I have a red species of slug and a blue species of slug. And there are three different characteristics for postzygotic isolation. If it's reduced hybrid viability, what does viability mean? Yeah, so ability to live. Yeah. So they may create a hybrid, but the hybrid is really small and weak. Oops. And so it's not able to survive in the environment. It's selected against. Okay. In reduced hybrid fertility, it may produce this actually really big and strong slug. I have to draw around the arrow. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. This is the Arnold Schwarzenegger of slugs. And it's very fit for the environment does very well, but his gonads don't work. <laughs> yep, probably. Okay, and usually this is because you have different number of chromosomes. So one has six chromosomes. The red one has six, and the blue one has four. And so they can make uh, an offspring that has five chromosomes, has something in between. Um, but those five chromosomes, when they go through meiosis, they won't split evenly. So all their eggs um, will not have enough or have too many chromosomes. Okay. All right, uh, the last example then. Is if they're able to make offspring and those offspring are able to make offspring But with each generation, they become less and less viable. Less and less, their viability is reduced. So in hybrid breakdown, um, their hybrids are not as fit 
as the original parents. Okay. Or they may eventually, um, let's say, the hybrid, the original hybrid is viable and fertile, but then the offspring of that one are infertile. Okay, so that's where the hybrids eventually just break down and no longer can reproduce. Okay, so those are prezygotic and postzygotic barriers to um, speciation, which is part of our biological species concept. All right, any questions? <laughs>